Before we jump in, a warning that we are an explicit book podcast. Yes, that means swearing, shitty jokes, and a whole lot of dark humour that some may take offence to. Please check your trigger warnings on all of the books we cover. You've been warned. The episode starts in three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> a book and a bear. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of your most favourite, treasured, brilliant podcast. It's a book and a bev. Hi. We are your hosts, Bryony, Ellie and Georgia, and today... Today, we are deep diving straight into Criminal Minds with book one of the Mindfuck series by S.T. Abbey, The Risk. Now, if you're ready for a badass, strong FMC and an incredibly sexy FBI agent and their whirlwind, lust-filled romance, just buckle the fuck in because we're about to take off. If you are not aware, this series is five books long. We are separating it for you. So we've got book one today. And because I've already finished the series, we are going to go through Bryony and Ellie's theories for the rest of the series before they get too far in. So that's what tonight's going to be. Then next week is going to be book two and book three in the one mm -hmm. episode. And then the week after will be book four and book five in the one episode. So buckle the fuck in, bitches. I'm so ready. So what are we drinking today? What's on the oh, menu? Well, look, I'm looking after my liver tonight because we have a podcast night out this week and I anticipating I'm going to get a little bit boozy. So tonight I have, I'm going to read it out to you. It is a raspberry soda -ly prebiotic soda. It's 100% natural with no sugar and it tastes like shit. Highly do not recommend. It's like you taste it and you feel like it tastes okay. And then there's like this weird aftertaste that you can't place. And it's like, mm. see, wine would have been better. But here we are. Friday <laughs> night, I will destroy my liver and anyone who's around me. And I make no Oh, issues. God, I'm terrified. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm drinking Jack and Coke because, you know, I am a lazy gal. I was going to be drinking red wine, but I felt like it was not red wine night for me. So it's Jack and Coke night because I feel like it'll just go down smoothly, just like this first book did. You know? Ooh, yes. You know. Look, I'm on the same train as you. I was like, red wine for the blood. Life is grey. And then I was like, no. And so <laughs> I'm drinking a 500 mil, 4.8% Jack and Coke today. Fuck it's it about up. as long as my head. I purely bought it because of the novelty size can. I have no answers. Well, what were the thoughts about the book? When I say women's rights and women's wrongs that apparently includes fictional female serial killers on a quest for brutal vengeance this book is 123 pages of strap the fuck in and i am dying to know more like i love lana and from the first page she had me by the fallopian tubes and i was more than happy to be her bitch can i forgive her for falling for the blonde love interest just because he's a super hot fbi agent at this stage, yes. This book is just like the perfect opening act to what is undoubtedly a traumatic as fuck story, but I'm still interested and I really want to know what's happening. And when I wrote these notes, I had just finished book one. And as we're recording, I've just finished book three and I am sad. Oh my God. I'm so excited. I've only finished book one. I'm going to stay like up to date as we go. I'm not going to read ahead and I'm not going to Google answers. Good. Or spoilers. Good. Well, this book has all of my favorite things. It's We've got murder. We've got criminal minds. We've got sexy FBI agent smut. We have female badassery and more murder. I love it all. I'm even going to overlook that the vernacular from criminal minds was literally copied and pasted into this book. So we've got profiling unsubs Penelope Garcia, but you know, maybe in real life, there is a Garcia in every FBI profiling team that's based in Washington, D.C. But it's possible. Regardless, it was an easy read and I adored it. So with that, I would like to welcome you all to this episode of True Crime with Ellie, where I will give you random and probably useless facts about female serial killers, also now known as FSKs. Okay, FSKs, stay with me. Starting with <laughs> approximately 15% of all serial killers are women. So this means that there are more female serial killers than there are female one-time killers. Okay. Also means that the, on average, yeah, there are more female serial killers out there than female CEOs, but 
Yeah. That's not a oh. thing I'm going to hang my feminist hat that on. That is today. a horrible statistic. Oh, yeah. God. So, yeah, stay tuned throughout the rest of this episode and this series for more brilliant facts. Well, I fucking loved this series, this book from the get-go. And, yes, I finished the series before, so, yes, I know what happens and what happened to our FMC, and I'm still traumatized from the heartbreak. This book is the beginning of Lana's vengeance journey, and like I love every single thing about it. Lana has been through extreme trauma, and the absolute coincidence that the first man to make her feel like a woman after everything is the FBI agent working on her serial killer case. <gasps> I live for the drama. I live for it. <laughs> but these books, they're honestly just like chef's kiss because I love a strong FMC and there are too many books with the woman being the damsel in distress and not enough powerful women who would destroy me and I would willingly let them. Mm. Anyway, yes, I love it. And while we're on this topic, rest in peace, ST Abby. This was perfect and we're sad that you're not here to make more. You know what I realised? When I was doing the hashtags for a video on this, I was like, ST Abby, stabby. Oh, stabby. When I went to look on Goodreads, it said ST Abby, a.k.a. and had two other author names. names. On Goodreads, if you go to the author profile of ST Abby, it says a.k.a. C.M. Owens and Christy Cunning. Okay. okay. She goes by many. Were there trigger warnings in this book? No. no. You guys are just lucky that you knew someone who had read the book who was like, I feel like this needed more trigger warnings than Ice Planet Agreed. of the Barbarians. Agreed. For the sake of listeners who may or may not be aware, like we said, George has already read the full series. Me and Ellie are going in essentially blind. But just in terms of trigger warnings and minding yourself, like, like we said, it's a book about a female serial killer out for revenge for what you can only assume is the worst case scenarios. So anything that your mind conjures up for that, imagine it. You can Google it and there are trigger warnings that people have made. If you really want to read the book, but you're a little bit nervous, like there's literally this page called book trigger warnings. So yeah. just do you your own research, okay? Google, but we're not responsible yeah, just, just, for your triggers, but we're just saying there's some dark shit in here. So guard your loins and look after yourselves. I don't actually know what guard your loins means, so maybe don't It's do meant that. to be maybe good. Also, it's good. meant to be okay. good. Well, if you Which I don't also... know what that means either. No, <laughs> maybe while you're Googling your trigger warnings, Google that too. Google what guard your loins means. All right, on that note, shall we do a quick round of who the fuck we meet in this book? So to start off with, we have Lana, a.k.a. our FMC. Traumatic backstory, formerly Victoria, would easily beat most men in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Say less. Please beat me, mummy. Oh, I'm sorry. Mummy. <laughs> then we have Logan, our uh, MMC, if you will. FBI agent, unfortunately blonde, works with his ex, which is a red flag. Workaholic, also red flag, but he's sexy bullet wound scars and all, and we love him. Then we have Jake, which is Lana slash Victoria's dead brother's boyfriend's also tech guru and sometimes handicapped bestie. <laughs> he <laughs> is, he's sometimes handicapped. Then we have Hadley. AKA Penelope Garcia, AKA FBI IT analyst. I nearly said FBI tit analyst. <laughs> <laughs> what a job. Sign me up. <laughs> um. Either way, she has boundary issues, don't we all? <laughs> then we have Craig Douche Canoe, PR for the FBI, a wannabe JJ, but we all know no one can touch her supremacy. Now, do we all know who JJ is from Criminal she, Minds? She's Criminal a blonde Minds. one. She is a blonde one. Yep, cool. cool, cool, cool. Then we have a couple people who are on our deceased list. Lana's already been busy. At this stage, just assume that if you hear a generic white man name, we're going to kill him. We also have some other serial killers that are popping up because Lana is not the only one in this industry. It's a hustle. So we have the boogeyman who is a serial killer and rapist. Ellie pitches him to be somewhat balding with poor hygiene. Yeah, yeah that tracks. I feel yeah, that. Yeah, he's also got like a, a little bit of a beard gut. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's a little bit of and like an oil stain around <laughs> the neck of his shirt. Yeah, there is. Oh. And like his teeth are yellow and coffee stained, but there's also just like a scraggly little beard <laughs> and there's dandruff yeah. in it sometimes. Yeah. Oh. Oh. I feel like the main players that we need to be familiar with are Lana, Logan, Jake, Hadley, Craig. The rest are interchangeable at this stage. So we start off the book with a dedication that literally breaks my fucking heart because I, for one, know what happened to our FMC. The dedication is, 
This is for the ones who lost their voice. This is for the ones who wish they could be Lana Myers. This is for the ones people still whisper about. This is for the ones who fight every single day to forget you are not alone. And cool. PSA, we also stand with you and we also love you. Yeah. And that alone just needs a trigger warning. My God. Throughout this book, we'll go into it, obviously, but there we get these flashbacks throughout the current time of what has happened. But I feel like the flashbacks, although they are very vague almost, like, but you know what's happened. It's not put in words exactly what is happening, but you know what is happening. Big yikes. We get smack bang into the book and we have a list of names. We have Tim, Chuck, Nathan, Jeremy, all of which are crossed off, but apparently there are many more to go. So that's great. We see straight away that our girl isn't like most. She is not like other girls. She is, in fact, a pterodactyl. (laughs) Einstein said, the weak revenge, the strong forgive, the intelligent ignore. Fuck that. She lives for revenge. And you know what? We fucking live for her. So thank you, Lana. We also learn that we are, in fact, Albert Einstein because he apparently loves humanity but hates humans. So sick. (laughs) Yeah. Our girl gets approached at her local coffee shop by a sleazy guy trying to chat her up. She's watching someone on her phone, a video, and she's actually trying to catch up on the latest episode of a Book and a Bev podcast. So, dude, fuck off. Hey, <laughs> trying he's to gonna, catch up on a favorite podcast. God, he's gonna seriously walk into some weird ass conversation. He's just like, actually, I'm not interested. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? That sounds kind of fucked up. But yeah, so he gets a little bit pissy when she rejects him. But his friend is in the background, like that's fucking hilarious. She notices his friend is like staring at her, and she analyzes the way he watches her, profiling him. And he does the same back to her. But in the end, he ends up like paying for her coffee. When she goes to pay, she figures this out. And she's like, hell fucking no. Because she's like, I'm not letting any stupid fucking man pay for my coffee. Which, fuck yeah. So she goes to be like, take my money. He's like, no, you provided me with entertainment. And so they end up having this little chit chat. She starts profiling him again. And he like does it straight back to her. And she's really shook because she has apparently trained herself against being profiled. He like ends up apologizing because he thinks he might have overstepped and we get this moment life sucks he says randomly then you die might as well live while you're still alive if you ever want help feeling alive call me i could use some life as well and then he gives her his number and he gets in the car and he drives away oh my god leave a girl wanting more So our girl's alarm goes off after this little interchange. She ends up going to a man's house. Ben, his name is. She puts on some men's shoes, weighs herself down with backpacks with weights in them, and sneaks into the house. She then jumps out and slices this motherfucker's Achilles heel. Oh, my God. Ben falls to the floor, crying out in agony while clutching his foot. The towel flops off, exposing every naked inch of him to my eyes. It makes my stomach royal. But the terror in his eyes... That gets me high. Ooh. Why Why is this hot? Why is, why is this attractive? Does anyone else just picture that scene from House of Wax when Jared Padalecki's Achilles gets cut between the floorboards? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. No. I still fucking just... love that movie, though. We find out that he doesn't actually recognize who she is because she's had, like, ten surgeries to reconstruct herself, but we find out this. I was a 16-year-old little girl the last time you saw me. I say with a dark smile. I'm all grown up now. Want to play? Yikes. Big yikes. She ends up following that up with, I don't believe in mercy. Three pounds of flesh will be extracted while he's awake. He'll beg and plead. He'll pray to pass out, but he will feel it all just like we did. Oh, my God. How much is three pounds of flesh? So three pounds is approximately 1.361 kilograms. That's (laughs) That's a sack of potatoes. That's a a lot. We then jump to our MMC, Logan, FBI agent profiler. He's looking into the murder of said Ben Harris, the same Ben that our girl brutally murdered last chapter. Rot row indeed. They profile the killer to be a large male, likely a sexual sadist and possibly gay because they cut off the victim's penis. Great. Castorize the man. It's fine. Fuck it up. And basically she's done that for the last few victims. So wrong. I actually (laughs) found it 
so so funny and i mean granted like obviously we know we're reading lana's point of view we know she's killing people but it was yeah. just so funny that they're like it's a man it's a big gay man and we're like <laughs> <laughs> they do think that it has something to do with the small religious town they grew up in, though, which is where all the victims are from, which is ding, 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 correct. One point. At least I got I something think, right. Yeah. One point for Gryffindor. <laughs> Our two MCs end up texting and chatting over the phone because our girl finally gets up the carriage to, like, message him. And there's some flirting going on. And that is, are you flirting with me, Agent Bennett? Maybe a little. They decide to meet up for a muffin and a coffee later. Logan ends up doing like a criminal history check on her with his co-worker, Hadley. But he looks very minimal. He's just like, as long as she's got no criminal records, sick, okay, bye. Which she doesn't, by the way, tiki ha. Our girl waits at the coffee shop and we see inside her mind for a moment, which is, I lived, others died, I lived, yet I feel dead. It's a big yikes. That's a really big yikes. When Logan arrives, she opens up about her parents dying in a car accident, which is a partial lie. Before he can open up too much, his phone rings. He has to go. He's a busy man with a busy schedule. And she's starting to feel like a little bit like smitten because he makes her feel more like a woman and not like a monster. So they agree that they're going to continue to chit chat. Our girl leaves this and is investigating another house. It's a man named Tyler's house. When she gets the text from Logan wanting to take her out, she's obviously a bit fucking occupied right now, but she agrees to do it when they're both back in town. So sick. We get like our first proper That's So Raven memory moment about her being held down by Ben, Tyler helping, and Kyle. It's giving bad vibes that is for sure. Ugh. We get this little snippet, which is, the memories used to leave me curled up in a ball and crying for hours. Now they fuel me. Feed my mission. Drive me forward. Make me a little murderous. Smash. Indeed. Smash. We learn that Logan is working on another case right now. It is the Boogeyman case along with our girl's case, but obviously they don't think it's a girl. He's trying to get into the mentality of the killer, but the town is acting like super weird, gives off super cult vibes, real iffy. So he's sticking to the gay sexual sadist approach, which is again, bow, bow, incorrect. Wrong. Wrong. Minus one point for Gryffindor. Oh, <laughs> which, let's Harry be Potter. real, Logan <laughs> is definitely a Gryffindor. Of course he is, little sweet darling honey pie. And Lana is a Slytherin. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And I would let her slither up in my, if you know oh, what I mean. Not the um, Slytherin. Anyway, so Logan loves that Lana doesn't know who Craig is because she's literally like, who? <laughs> when he tries to <laughs> explain it to her, she's like, who? I don't know who that is. And we also love that about her. She says she only remembers the names of people she likes or wants to kill and she realizes that that's not really a great joke to make to the fbi agent on the case but logan has his love heart glasses on so he doesn't even notice or care he's like no. you're so pretty like, oh my god <laughs> say things you're so lovely well i have another f s k m moment for you all say it with me female serial killer moment here we go on average they take way longer to get caught than men are we surprised no because clearly this is because women are far superior in all ways but also because they have much more subtle techniques like poison for example so on average a female serial killer her career lasts between 8 to 11 years whereas a male serial killer an average of two that's a big fucking difference. There may be more of them, but they're incompetent. So Logan's trail is going cold, and that may or may not be because they still think that their serial killer is a repressed and sexually frustrated gay guy. But whatevs, that's good for our girl, so sure. Lana and Logan's texts are getting a little bit more steamy, and I love her confidence. Then one day, like, Logan is then easily convinced by Lana to borderline break the law and search for her address so that he can casually be in her neighborhood and they can, like, visit Bone Town. That's a lot. That's it's an a invasion, lot. invasion of privacy. Good way to lose your job, Logan, but go forth and orgasm. And, like, normally, even one of them doing it, You're I would be board not board. on board with, but they're both as into it as each other, so it's okay. We learn yeah. that Lana is actually Victoria Evans, but she, quote, unquote, died 10 years ago. And if you think that this identity change stemmed from a completely innocent turn of events, then you would be wrong. We don't know yet what that was, but the vibes are iffy. Basically, Lana assumed the identity 
of Kennedy Carlisle and then changed her name to Lana. If you subtract the currently unknown but obviously traumatic backstory, we should all be so lucky to find a rich orphan to assume their fortune. Yeah. Yeah, fine. I up, also right? want to inherit some dead person's money. That'd be nice. Yeah. We also learn about how Lana's grief progressed over the years with her. Like there's this whole bit where it's like year one, I couldn't do this. Year two, I couldn't do this. Year three. And by the end, like 10 years later, working up to this point where Lana is like a black belt in like 15 different types of martial art, now she's determined to have a life in between killing people. So, you know, you strive for that. Multitask queen. (laughs) I love that she didn't quite get to like the healing part after 10 years. She was like, you know what, I do feel solace in between killing people. (laughs) Yeah. We've all got hobbies. Yeah. So we meet Jake, her co-conspirator, and assistant with the murders who is, like, overly cautious and understandably alarmed by the fact that she is fucking an FBI agent. But alas, we have no time for that because Logan knocks on the door for said fucking. She opens the door and it's on. Hands in her hair, her legs around his hips. Life is great. Mentally, she is like, hopefully he doesn't find my murder room. But physically, they take it to the bedroom. Good. <laughs> Maybe doesn't find the, mur- the murder roomie. And, and she's, she's like, that's really into BDSM. Okay, go with it. <laughs> Don't ask questions. So the quote we get is, where the hell have you been? He says against my lips, causing me to grin against him as he pushes me down, coming down on top of me. I'm not sure what that means, but I love the awe in his tone. And yes, that man should be worshipping the ground you walk on. Yeah. Yes, he should. While undressing Lana, Logan sees some of her horrific scars but she distracts him with the power of the pussy and everything goes swimmingly (laughs) the quote we get is it is perfect which is why i need to kill the monitoring channel in the living room so that it doesn't work lock my murder room and make sure all my weapons stay in there from now on yeah (laughs) 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 logan is a man possessed by the lana lust and so he does like a casual background search and sees that she has no family and he's like oh that's sad but then he feels bad for checking her history so he doesn't dig any further yeah so you should logan Um, you should feel bad it's probably fair you should. it's probably fair yeah. actually logan has to cancel on lana at the last minute because he had a break in a case about a guy who's using his victims to make bronze face casts that was weird but okay yeah i was like okay cool logan has to fly to new york for this case but lana is like it's all good like just survive that's the only thing i'll ever ask of you and that is terrifying foreshadowing but okay god lana and jake are traveling as well and they also just happen to be traveling to new york because her current target is meeting up with one of the other ones on her list and so they obviously need to go and investigate this. Basically, they see two of our bad guys meeting up for lunch and Lana and Jake overhear them discussing who they think is picking them off and the discussion actually takes one of the guys off of Lana's list. Obviously, Lana and Jake are in like disguises while this happens but as they go to leave, because Lana looks like a hooker, one of the guys actually like it catches his attention and he like grabs her arm to be like, hey pretty lady. Kill this man <laughs> here. <laughs> he was like, oh yeah Young girl, yay! Shout out to Elvis. <laughs> 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 marrying children it's fine anyway ultimately as she is leaving this restaurant Logan pulls up at the curb lucky she's dressed as a hooker and he's like only got eyes for Lana he doesn't see her but oh my god it's close also they're in New York there is only one restaurant in all of New York there is no other <laughs> options <laughs> exactly right no that's it only one <laughs> flash to Logan's point of view obviously he solved his case and he's home and he's ready to get it on with Lana again can't blame him she's hot as fuck Lana goes to his house this time because of his murder room and he asks her opinion on a case which actually results in a good lead and Lana hopes that this helps him catch the killer and we get this quote I won't lie and say it's not hypocritical to hope he catches the sicko who raped and killed all these women it's hypocritical because I'm also hoping he never catches me for torturing and killing a string of men <laughs> <laughs> fuck, no, the man, fuck, right fuck the men fuck them yeah so Jake calls Lana while Logan is still on a call and Jake has so far stayed out of the actual like blood and guts of the murders and just is essentially like her IT guy he's trying to like convince her to end things with Logan and she ends up convincing him that you know the reason it's so easy for me to do this is because there's nothing inside me but this hatred but this rage the first time I've ever felt this in like 10 years is now with Logan and he's like oh well that is pretty interesting that's pretty nice healing would probably be some good I can't 
currently fight that. Even though he is a blonde love interest, but that's fine. <laughs> Jake puts a pin in the whole Logan situation for now because, like I said, sounds tragic as fuck. Logan and Lana end up cuddling in the kitchen and then Lana touches his scars and we get some of his war stories. When we get this moment, she's like, so you're not big and strong, I ask, then burst out laughing when he lifts me up and starts walking with me. Strong enough to handle you, he quips, and then slaps my ass with one hand. I bet I could take you, I say jokingly, but wondering if I really could or not. I'll let you show me your fighting skills later, he says, before kissing me again and moving toward a room. I decide I don't want to know if I can take him or not. I just want to pretend like I'm a normal girl with a normal guy in our normal relationship for one normal night. And again, this is some horrible foreshadowing and I am scared. Yeah. Yeah, look, it's not great. It's not boding well. Yeah. But with with that, I'm back for another... FSKM. So they, they being female serial killers, they are more motivated by material gain, like money. Whereas men, let's have some guesses. What motivates men to kill? Let me guess. It's the power of the pussy. It's the power of the pussy. You got it in one. Yeah. Girl. Material girl. Get that money. Will. <laughs> Get that fucking money. Okay. Well, I'm just going to take you in now. I'm in chapter 13 and I'm we're just bashing the shit out of some creepy <laughs> ass man who's trying to mug our girl. <laughs> and she's leaving him gurgling on his gurgling. own blood. That's how far. She's like, you know what? I could simply just put you in like a little gooseneck chicken wing movement here, like some self-defense, like karate kid move. Gooseneck chicken wing. Okay. Gooseneck okay. chicken Goose. wing. No, no, no. <laughs> No, no, it's like it's like, like an a, arm like thing. A... So they're two different moves. Okay, your gooseneck is where you grab their thumb. I think it's the thumb, and you like twist it. And then the chicken wing is where you like rip it behind their arm. The perks of being a cop's child, That's you right. learn these things. They've clearly not sunk into my brain, other than the names of it. So I would actually not be able to do that. If someone's just got shove. you in a chokehold, and you're like, oh, the chicken wing, <laughs> chicken wing. Where's your arms? Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I've got sidetracked. Yeah, <laughs> so she has broken his arm stabbed him and left him gurgling on his own blood so nice yeah so she's changed into her escort outfit and she's making sure that lawrence can see her walk across the street so she knows she's looking fine and she's got a little blonde wig on and she's just you know trotting along and sorry like can we get that trot motion one more time just <laughs> no. Okay. The disgusting piece of shit he is, he grabs her ass as she's just walking down the street. And it, what an entitled, gross man. Ew. There are no words. Turns out she was expecting that though. And she lures him to her car in like a secluded parking garage where she promptly bashes his head into the side of the door a few times till he passes out. Beautiful. Great. This book is literally like every fantasy I have had about what I would do in that yes. scenario. Yes, just hundred percent fulfilled. A hundred percent. All those nights where I've had to walk to my car with like my keys in between my thumbs, mm-hmm. so then we can like eye gouge them. Yeah. Nope. Just leave, give them a concussion. Leave them gurgling on their own blood. Gurgling on that. their own dick. Look. Even. <laughs> give, give them. Goose give them a goose neck. Why are you there? Sounds like a weird sex move now. <laughs> it like does. I'm, saying it. <laughs> I'm just ready to like go. go, go. <laughs> That's a turkey. We're not at Thanksgiving yet. <laughs> gobble gobble. <laughs> oh, gobble gobble. <laughs> <laughs> no one's gobbling anything okay we get a glorious exchange between lawrence and lana lawrence says i'm not worried i think i can handle you lana replies baby i can promise you that you won't survive a girl like me <laughs> where's, you won't. where's you the won't. life oh my god it's brilliant so lana has basically set up the creepiest murder room at tyler's house to carry out her double homicide lawrence is strung up like a deflated blow-up doll <laughs> while children's nursery rhymes play in the background yeah because like, fyi mm, it's the worst yeah like Yana after that ever. lunch where she was just as the hooker she's like <laughs> you know what two for one special at audi let's go I'm yeah she's wait. so angry she was like fuck yeah. it up special buys <laughs> One special aisle. She went down that special buys aisle and she was like, doing this, motherfucker. <laughs> She's like, fuck yeah. She's like, I'm not just getting one, I'm getting whack two, I'm all. getting two. Yeah, whack, string them whack up. them all, actually. I yes. love the nursery rhymes as well. Do you know what I think would be worse for me, it, rather than nursery rhymes? Better homes and gardens. I think if you <laughs> just had Noni and her husband, who's actually the guy in Wolf Creek, that would just do me in. So there we go. Nursery rhymes, That everything's happening. Lana waits for her time to shine and she's just 
standing in a dark corner of the room while she watches Lawrence piss himself and proceed to burst into tears. <laughs> we love the humiliation. We're here for it. Yes, it's so good. So this is her moment for a dramatic throwback to her past trauma. She says to him, those tears won't save you or that's let that settle. Yeah, you <laughs> slut. Oh my God. <laughs> Lana's going in with Georgia. So Lana's got the traumatic backstory. You know, this is something that has been said to her. So she's just going in, like, setting the scene. And Georgia's like, yeah, you fucking dirty slut. <laughs> she's, like, she's, just like, improving over and above. <laughs> and improv. Slut. Yes, and. And <laughs> <laughs> oh. scene. Right, well. Yes, and. <laughs> <laughs> just imagine it those tears won't save you you whore yes and you dirty slut <laughs> yeah <laughs> and you just Georgia looks at Lana yeah, yeah. Emma, Emma, do, you want, do you want more do you want more <laughs> should I spit on him <laughs> for fuck's sake <laughs> take it take it you little bitch you would be the best friend to have in that scenario though <laughs> you would just be one. full of support <laughs> all right so george has done her improv so that is to say she's beginning to slowly walk towards him until she's under the light but he still doesn't recognize her because he's a slow and stupid man but then jake walks through the door dragging tyler with him who now has two broken legs turns out that jake and lana have taken martial arts classes in every form of art that exists so snaps for them i guess that's an effort Ah. They string Tyler up so they now have twin blow-up dolls to play with. Tyler, the poor possum, is not doing great. His legs are as broken as his spirit and he's just shaking like a damn leaf. And it's like, well, Tyler, one, you probably gang raped and tortured. Two, you're cheating on your wife. Who the fuck's Denise, Tyler? Who the fuck Who's is Denise? Denise? Who is Why Denise, Denise, Tyler? Exactly right. <laughs> Why Denise? Who Denise? What Denise? How Denise? <laughs> George just start reading him the text messages on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Lana's like, stop, you don't need to do that. I'm like, oh, oh, but justice for Denise. the justice for Denise. <laughs> Okay, um, so we're, we're going to move on now. Lawrence still thinks he is in control despite being a blow-up doll and calls Lana a crazy bitch, to which she says, no, I'm a pissed off crazy bitch. You knew me when I was younger. You knew my brother too. He then is starting to realise what's going on. We're getting snippets of Lana's past and this shit is dark. Like, getting raped while you listen to your brother be tortured, kind of dark. She has a lot of emotions to work through and just begins slicing and dicing with a dull knife. Because, you know, therapy. Why pay for therapy when you can do that? You know, slicing and dicing with a dull knife, that's therapy. (laughs) The intrusive thought one. I can't wait. You know, if, like, a child has been assaulted and they've got the doll in therapy where they're like, this is what happened, you were saying that Lawrence is a blow-up doll. She's just reenacting. Yeah. That's where my mind went. I was like, ooh, I don't think I'm laughing, but I'm uncomfortable. I know. She's going to cut off their simultaneous dicks and put them in each other's mouths. Yeah. I love it. I mean, anyway. it's women's rights, women's wrongs. Smash. We're here for it. And again, at this stage, like you don't know the full story of what's happened, but the idea you've already got is already so dark and so yeah. awful that I'm like, absolutely, Lana, you go to town. You just have an absolute ball. <laughs> yeah. At no point did I ever question her moral no. reasons. <laughs> Never. I was like, yeah, bet. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. Anyway, so Fuck she's up. scheduled a week in her diary on this occasion so that we know that things are going to get a lot worse for these boys and we have no care in the world no not one not a single one a single one neither does denise apparently because she's just like off like having a great time and she doesn't notice until like a week or so later an anonymous person sent her the text messages with the mistress and so she denise is the mistress Oh, no, Denise sure. is the mistress. Denise is the mistress. I mean, I was rooting what? for the mistress no, just in the way that, like, Denise. I was, will barrack for all women. But, I mean, I... Well, maybe she didn't know he was married. Let's give her the benefit of the doubt so she can still have justice. But also, so does his wife. Yeah. Well, justice for the wife. And, well, Denise, suffer in your jocks. 
your mistress skank suffering in your jocks, Denise. <laughs> anyway, we go back to Logan now and he's texting Lara, which we can assume is in between torture breaks. And it turns out that she was right with her profile on the boogeyman. They found their guy and a citywide manhunt is underway. Lana, the sensible one, tells him to watch his back because she thinks his this murderer will come after him. He's clueless and is like, nah, babe, it's all good. I've got this. And clearly he has not watched the episode of Criminal Minds when Hotch is targeted by a serial killer that eventually kills his ex-wife oh my god that episode is so sad yep promise me you'll show him how to have fun mm. <laughs> So it's fine, okay? We're not traumatized. We're moving on. Lana is like, bro, I want more orgasms, so I'm just not going to let you die. Okay. Logan decides to surprise our girl with a quick visit a week later, and the stress is real because we know Lana just got back from killing those dolls, and we know she isn't expecting him to rock up at her house, but it's fine because she sees him at the door and immediately distracts him by dropping her towel and leading him to her room with the scent of her vag. She's vabbed. She was like, I've got this. She's vabbed. What? And then she's just wafted him in. (laughs) Waft pheromones. She wafted She wafted him. (laughs) Everything's fine until he finds blood in her hair. Lana lies to him, then covers up that lie with another lie. She's all guilty. Logan's all jealous because he we had this like who is Jake moment. It's a whole time. (laughs) She's realizing how much she actually likes him and also how close she was to him finding her murder bag and blood drenched clothes. But he was distracted by the pussy. So everything is fine. So Lana ends up talking to Jake, who was doing some recon on the boogeyman, who has now killed another woman, and he carved into her body the words boogeyman and Logan Bennett. It would have to be pretty small handwriting because, like, I'm picturing something big and graphic like boogeyman, but then how is he going to fit, like, Logan Bennett on that torso as well? Little letters. He took his time. It's incursive, (laughs) actually. Very impressive. He got his pen license early. (laughs) He's got his pen license. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So where were we? Our girl and Jake clearly have watched the aforementioned Criminal Minds episode because they know she, as Logan's girlfriend, is next on the kill list. But she can take him, so we're all sweet. But then there's a knock on the door. It's Hadley, and she wants to know why Lana stole the identity of a dead girl. And that is how we end this motherfucking book. That was like a newscaster. You yeah. really, like, you, you went into that. You committed. You know what that means. Theory time. So, as we said at the beginning of the episode, Georgia has read the full series before. She knows what happened. Ellie and I are going in blind. We don't know what happens. Ellie is not being a psychopath and is not Googling. We're proud of her. So, <laughs> this is theories for the series. Oh, so. my God, it rhymes. Sorry. Ooh, Sorry. theories. For the secrets. So mine are, one, I think that book two is going to be about Lana versus the boogeyman serial killer who's targeting Logan with this culminating in Lana being kidnapped but killing her way out and then this will make Logan sus of her. Two, I think the people she's killing killed her brother and Victoria as payback for something they thought her father did and I'm assuming that she was gang raped but also possibly her brother was as well as I think he was gay and him and Jake were lovers. Yes, I agree. Three, Logan will obviously be trying to catch the killer, but I think he will figure out it's Lana and it will be heartbreaking and so they will have to play like a cat and mouse type game where I think Lana will have to use what she knows about Logan against him if she wants to get her kill list sorted, but it will be really conflicting as if she wants to love and be with Logan, then she'll need to give up her vengeance, but she thinks it's all she has, whereas in Logan's point of view, he'll be fighting like his heart versus the law. Four, I think that Jake will turn on Lana and want to take take things further or will try to take Logan out of the picture so that they can fulfill their vision quest. And either way, Lana will have to kill Jake and she will be forced to kill her last good connection with her past. Oh, I like these theories. Mine is quite simple, which is <laughs> I think Logan's going to find out and I think we're going to get a book <laughs> or two where he's out to get her, but then they will have a heated rekindling of their romance like Mr. and Mrs. Smith and they go off the grid together and they're Ooh. now living in Jamaica somewhere and have eight children. Jamaica and eight children. Why so eight? eight? Number. Well, I'm not going to tell you guys my theories because yeah, I know what but, happens. So. And who's closer, me or Brownie? <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends. I mean, in a way, you both are on the right track. I feel like both have things that are right and things that are hmm. very not I mean, right. I'm excited. <laughs> it's Jamaica. So long. <laughs> it's, it's Jamaica. That's where they are. <laughs> so long 
as I get a scene where they hate their hate fucking. Oh, the hate fuck. I want some hate fucking. So that is book one of the Mind Fuck series done. Yay. Oh, I'm so excited. If they end up in Jamaica, yeah. like someone, <laughs> I need to go out and buy a lottery ticket or something. Like, fuck. Absolutely. Well, that is it. So Mind Fuck book one, The Risk, is over and done with. Were your theories on par with Brownie and Ellie? because I'm so excited to just get forward, keep moving, and just tear everyone's lives apart with this book. Nice. So excited. (laughs) We don't have a music reference for you this week, and we don't have any fan art for you. So if you know of fan art for the series, please send it through. And if you've got any ideas for song references that give you uh, this vibe, also let us know. But otherwise, we will see you guys next week for books two and three. Bye. 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 Thank you for listening to our podcast. You can find us on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube if you haven't already at a Book and a Bev podcast. Please rate, like, and subscribe. We hear that helps. We love and appreciate you, and we'll see you next week.